Elevation Church reveals why they don't use words like resurrection on Easter invites. Hence, it's a terrible reason. Okay, all right, so let's see what they have to say. Some of you guys know this guy, who he is. If you want to put the senior pastor on uh, 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 who he is, Pro, uh, Pro Church Tools recently sat down with Nikki uh, Sharir, Elevation Church Digital Content Director. She is responsible for overseeing the all copy coming out of Elevation Church, 25,000 member uh, multi-site led by Stephen Furtick. She gets the tone of church emails, blesses or nixes the language of social media posts and develops guidelines for responding to events in the news. In a wide range interview, Sharia explains why, why they don't use phrases in the church. Elevation Church does not like the words like resurrection, Calvary or blood of Jesus on its Easter invites as that language will immediately make someone feel and outside it. Can you play this clip, Rob? I'm talking all the way from people who have been in our church for years, and I want them to invite people to church, all the way to people who've never heard of our church before and trying to get them to come to church, right? People who are unchurched, you might say. And so how do I talk to those two people are really different. Um, but I'm putting a lot of my focus, energy, time, resources toward what I would call the cold audience as people far from God. And so I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection. I'm not going to say the blood of Jesus, uh, right? Um, I'm not going to say any of these words that make someone feel like an outsider. This is really important. Um, a, a, an important guiding principle for how we develop language is um, anyone can be a part of our church. Tom, you, it might not be for everyone. This? Everyone might not She's like She's triggered it. from the Bible. <laughs> so they have an organization and they have gatherings and... You know, um, Stephen Furtick gets a lot of criticism from a lot of different pastors, including one we both know. I'm not going to put names out there because I don't need to create drama. But, you know, when you, if you are a Christian church, then you have your Bible, you have your New Testament, and you don't need to amplify certain things, but you certainly don't change certain things. The message is the message, you know, and on this Easter weekend, Good Friday is a day of remembrance. You know, Christ died, he was crucified on a cross, that is just a description of what happened, and then he rose again, which is called a resurrection, which is a celebration of Easter Sunday, dying for the sins of mankind. Now, when you, if someone walks up to you, and like Alcoholics Anonymous, they wade into it, they say, hey, you should think about a higher power to maybe help you in your journey to find strength to get through your addiction. You don't hit them with like, you know, two hours of, of, of heavy, heavy dialogue. You wade into it. And on one hand, if a church is wading into it with, with someone who's new, wading into it, that's one thing. But if you're going to take Easter and you're going to describe being of something that, that, that it's not, then you're, 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 not really, you're not really sharing the message. That's not the message. And there's a lot of criticism with, with this organization and other organizations that water it down or change the message. And, you know, on Easter Sunday, there's a beautiful message that like, hey, we all sin have fallen short. Christ died on Good Friday for your sins, rose again on Easter, and he's there. Do you think this is the right approach savior. to take? I don't think this is the right approach. I don't think the right approach is to basically hide the ball from people that are coming in to hear it. And I also don't think it would be the right approach that if somebody comes into an AA meeting or comes in, that you hit them hard, very, very heavy and emotional. Right. But that's not what they're doing here. They're basically talking about just watering it down. And there's a thing called seeker sensitive and socially pr progressive language that I, I think waters down the message and really hides the ball of the message. And I don't think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I think when I look at Stephen Furtick, uh, I think of somebody who's an incredible motivational speaker. Uh, Agree. Uh, one, of the, one of the best motivational speakers on the way he delivers his message. And in regards to, I don't have a lot of information on him, but in regards to taking positions like this, this goes back to my point of Christians that are becoming uh, tolerant Christians that are, uh, you know, apologizing about, you know, what they stand for instead of being a little bit direct. And I think it's going in a different direction. This is kind of like saying, it's okay, let him in. 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 I don't know. Uh, I remember when I was at the church we were going to in LA, and they said there's a couple different ways to preach from the top. There's ways to preach where you're just kind of preaching to motivate people, and there's ways you preach that you're building disciples. If you just want to bring people in to preach, 
and, you know, become a motivational speaker, be as watered down as possible. If you want to develop disciples that are hardcore believers to go out there and build and run their own life groups and build other people, you got to take a different route. They've done something right to have 25,000 people there. I just don't know if this is the right approach to take for others to follow. For those of you guys that watch the podcast regularly, and maybe you have hot tea like me with honey, or you drink your Mm -hmm. coffee to the coffee community, I'll most likely join you guys in five years. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I still don't eat coffee. We have these new mugs. And by the way, this new mug that just came out is the PBD Podcast mug. Take we had future look sprite on it. So let me kind of show this to you, and I'll tell you what we're running on this podcast. And Kelly uh, took care of this. Let me pour this so I don't burn I'm myself. taking one. I'm, I'm acquiring I one of those after this. this here. So you pour the hot water in there if it's hot. Ooh, and guess what it turns into, by the way, while you're having this hot tea or the drink. Let me see if this thing is hot. Is it, it is hot? hot. All of a sudden, slowly... Oh. But surely, uh-huh. you see the color changes. I see it. To the PBD podcast colors. Oh, that's sick. And yes, you'll see the red and the blue of PBD podcast color coming in. I don't sick. know. Kyle, you're like one of those models not. on those late night, yeah. like by the uh, QVC. QVC back in the day. Your, QVC, so, your PBD QVC. <laughs> here's what we're doing. We got the value tainment mug. You have two different op, four different options on whichever one you want to get, whether it's the gold, the black, the red, the OG, red or the black. You buy two. You get the third one for free. Pick and choose Mm. which one you want. The link's going to be below. The discount code's going to be PBD Mugs, I believe. Right, Rob? PBD Mugs, plural. PBD M-U-G-S. And what's the website to go to? VTMerch.com. Find the mugs. Order two. And you'll get the third one for free. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.